Hello, good morning, and welcome. My name is Rob, and today on the channel, we are going to go ahead and unbox, give a, a quick overview, and then maybe a little test of the CAF VR180 3D camera. So I ordered this on a Kickstarter many months ago, and uh, without any warning or any shipping notification, it showed up at my door. So, we are going to go ahead and unbox. Now, this was the premium version that I backed, which should give me some extras in the back. So, we are going to have a couple of things we're going to go through, the camera, unboxing, etc. We'll go ahead and start with undoing this packaging. And here we have a plethora of things. So we're going to go ahead and put that to the side and pull things out one by one. We have a card reader, type C. That's nice. Battery charger. This looks like it's a Ethernet adapter to type C. So that may be for uh, live streaming because you can live stream from this camera. So they say. We have Chinese lettering and a power brick. Okay, little type C power brick, not bad. It's uh, rare these days that you get an extra power brick. And then we have, these might be the VR glasses. Yeah, so this, I believe you kind of hook on the camera and then you can kind of get the 3D effect. We'll look into all these in a little bit. So here we have the actual box for the CAF camera. It does come in a carrying case uh, in this one, and uh, that's all in here. All right, so here we are. We are going to go ahead and unbox this bad boy, cut through the sticker and the paper at the same time. Um, nice box. I can appreciate the packaging. And then you just have a handle, very similar to the DJI, and uh, same style design, which is nice. I can appreciate a good bag. So here we go. Let's go ahead and zoom you out and in so you get a better look. Okay, so here we are. No pockets or anything on the outside, but you do have your top pocket here. We got a silica gel, eat that later. We have some nice foam. This was for uh, the trip over. It's nice. Uh, up top here, little Velcro package. We got some instructions, uh, USB-C to C, microfiber cloth. There's your battery. And then we have the camera kind of nestled in here. Ooh. It's a hefty weight. Okay, that's good. This is uh, all metal construction here. It's kind of nice. What's interesting is we have a the sticker. I noticed this on another review. This red sticker here, which I don't know if that's just for fun, but both of the stickers, the paper is coming off here and here. I don't know if that's just a for fun sticker, you know, like you put a red sticker on to mimic the cannons, you know, red, whatever. Anyways, so here's the camera. Um, the nestling part of the foam, which you can remove, but that's kind of nice having it at the bottom there. We have a little pocket here, it doesn't have anything in it. It's very nice, relatively padded, 
bag. Um, I don't know that I'm going to put it in this bag. Um, I actually plan on using the Crane M3S with this, so that's not going to fit in here. So I probably will be using a bigger bag to hold all of the things. So, I'm going to go ahead and move that to the side. Now, I want to see, does this have a battery in it already? No, but it does have a memory card. This is a SanDisk Extreme, so that's nice, 128, which is good. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and bring you in a little bit so that we can go over some buttons and kind of what's all on here. This is a very nice construction. It's not easy to hold. It's not comfortable. There's no, it's very blocky, um, but you'll notice they have mounting points on every side of the camera so that uh, you're going to be putting this on gimbals, you're going to have handles, you're going to have external microphones and things. So they've given you tons of mounting options, which I think is really, really, really great. So let's go ahead and kind of get a little closer. Okay, as you see here, this is the front of the camera. We have our two lens caps here, our two lenses with the Sony sensors. I'll put some information here on the screen of sensor size, etc. On the top here, we have a power button and a shutter button and a mounting point and an LED, which uh, illuminates when you're recording. On the right side here, you see we have what looks like some kind of airflow or heat sink, and then you have another mounting point. On the bottom here, you have your battery door. Your SD card goes in here. You have another mounting point, and of course, more areas for fans and air to, you know, let some, some of the heat out, because this camera does get hot from what I've heard. Now on the left side here, you do have a, another mounting point. You see we have a little rubber cover here for charging, transfer, charging and transfer, and a dedicated microphone button. So I'll go ahead and open this port up. You see you have three USB-Cs and then a 3.5 jack there. So very, very cool. Lots of options here. Then the back, you have a playback, you have a back, you have your screen. I haven't taken off the screen yet. And then of course you have like a little D-pad, which feels meh, but not terrible. I've had worse on point and shoot cameras before and, and I've had some better ones on some DSLRs. But I'm gonna go ahead and charge up the batteries here and see what we got going on. Then we're gonna go ahead and jump into some testing. So now you'll notice that this battery charger that came as an extra bit is a dual battery charger but I only have one battery. That's because they did run into some issues with um, customs and having so many batteries. So my assumption is the extra batteries I ordered will be shipped separately. This, and I don't know why, this is a micro USB. I, you know, <laughs> I'm not sure why they do that. Um, I feel like the iPhone 15 just came out and they've gone to USB-C. I don't know why anyone is still selling any product with a micro USB. So it's kind of a little uh, hit for me, but it's not the end of the world. Um, it does have a USB-C port. So I might look into seeing if that, there's no paperwork or anything here, which this is a C to C cable. So I'm going to go ahead and just put the battery straight in the camera. I'm just going to ignore this charger for now. I'm going to go ahead and put the battery in here. Okay. 
wiggles a little bit. That's okay. Okay, we got a loading screen. Pretty nice. Um, I like that I can stand this on its lenses and it not be an issue because the lenses have the covers on them. Uh, looks like the battery is mostly charged. Um, I don't know that I'm going to do a like complete rundown of options and things in the menu because I'm going to have to play around quite a lot with this. All right, so we go ahead and push the power button. And the CAF cam powers up. It does take a second to turn on. Uh, this is definitely not the speed of your mirrorless cameras of today. So there you see, you have, we'll go ahead and we'll zoom in a little bit more. Let's see if we can exposure for that correctly. So in this section here, you see we have the VR180 down in the bottom corner here. 6K at 50 frames a second, an H.264 at 100 megabits per second, and then this is how much space we have on the card. It is 128 gigs, and with the system settings and that little test video I did, we're at 118 gigs left. We have a timer up here, ISO auto, exposure value, auto white balance, and it looks like our shutter speed is also in auto, and then you have a battery timer there. This switches between your videos that you've done, which we're going to go ahead and get back out of there. And then if we click this, we can use this D-pad to select, um, or we can use our touchscreen as well. So now I've switched over to camera mode to take a picture. So I'll go ahead and I will take a picture. Okay, just as easy as that it looks like. Of course, if we go to our playback, we see a JPEG image here that is 13 megabits big, megabytes. And it's got time and date stamp up here and everything, so that's good. Um, it doesn't seem that there's an easy way to transition between filming a to go from picture to video. So it doesn't seem like there's a real easy way to switch between the two. Um, once you start recording, there is your indicator here. It is a blue indicator that starts flashing uh, to let you know. I'll go ahead and I'll turn this around so you can see that indicator there is now illuminated, letting you know that we are recording. And that's that. So I would say I'm going to go ahead and um, try and we're going to take this outside and set it up on a tripod because I don't want to move around with it yet. And we're just going to do a real quick test in the backyard. So let's head out there. Okay, so that wraps up our little test here of the CAF 180VR 3D camera. Um, I slapped a little Peak Design clip on here. I'm going to go ahead and plug this into the old computer and see what we're working with. All right, real quick, like, sorry for the mess. We just moved in and I'm trying to get my office set up, but uh, I wanted to just kind of go over a couple of things real quick. Last you saw, we were heading outside with the CAF camera to do some testing. Did some testing. I will link the test video right here. Um, turned out really, really well. The only problem I did have was when I plugged in the DJI microphone, um, it was real hot in comparison to uh, what I thought. On the transmitter and receiver, there's you can see uh, an audio meter for the DJI microphone. There's no audio meter on the camera, so it's just a really, really hot mic. Um, so it's peaking a lot. I hope I hope they add that in the future, add a little audio meter so you could see. Because on the trans uh, the transmitter on the receiver, um, it seemed like it was well within you know spec. But 
I use Shotcut as a video editor. Um, it is a free open source video editor. I've been using it for my other channel, Here Today, Where Tomorrow, which is kind of our travel channel for the family. If you wanted to go check that out, I'll leave a link down below. Um, and I love it. It's a great editor, especially because it's free. Um, and I was able to, through the help of the CAF Discord server, fumble my way through some small edits and was able to get the VR 180 3D completely uploaded to YouTube, pulled out my Quest 2, put it on, and it works 100%. So um, I had to take off hardware encoding on export because I kept getting caught up on that and it turns out that I guess a lot of editors um, especially kind of the open source free ones that use FFMM, whatever. Um, so it turns out that the hardware encoders get in the way sometimes. So turning that off allowed it, albeit a little bit slower, allowed it to get over that and uh, finish the export. Then when I uploaded it to YouTube, it seemed like the VR180 part had been, the metadata had been removed upon editing. So I used a program, which I guess is no longer in service, this VR180 creator that was originally created by Google uh, when they were doing their like Google Cardboard where you stick your phone inside the little cardboard box and it was kind of a little VR headset type thing. Um, but you basically insert your video, your edited video, and it reinserts that metadata for the VR180 and uploaded it to YouTube and we're good as gold. So a little bit of finagling. It's taken me basically about a half a day um, and I have edited, I have exported this video like 17 times in many different ways trying to get it to work and anyways, it works. It's done. So on first unboxing, testing, and review, um, it is it is exactly what I hoped it would be and a little bit more. Um, I know that once we really get into the nitty-gritty of actually like changing settings and like I said we just moved here and apparently a squirrel has moved into my attic. Anyways so, um, once we get into a couple more settings and figuring out some of the like nitty gritty of it all, I'm really excited for this. Um, I am overjoyed with uh, the camera. I feel like it was absolutely worth the investment and I am super excited to see what the future brings for the camera because it is an ever evolving machine. Um, they will be putting out patches and updates, etc. Um, and then to see where this space goes. I know with the um, addition of Apple's headset coming out in a bit, you got the Quest 3 coming out, the PSVR 2 just came out not long ago. So we're definitely, there's more VR stuff in the VR space and they're making it way more accessible. So I'm really excited to see where this goes. I've been playing around with 360 video for a very long time um, and I use it a lot in my edits uh, for the travel channel. So kind of having some of that experience, um, I think I understand a little bit more on the VR 180 side as well. So I think this is really all gonna be a great experience. Um, we'll all just stumble through it for a little bit until we kind of get all the nitty gritty. I know there's a lot of people out here that have much more experience in VR than I do, uh, but I know that given time, I'll be right there with them. So. Thank you for watching this unboxing video and go check out the test video if you haven't. Um, subscribe to the channel because we're definitely going to be doing a lot more in-depth dives with the CAF camera, Insta360, and a bunch of other cameras that are coming out or, or that we have. So uh, thank you very much. I'm Rob McNeil and uh, we will see you guys in the next one.